fighting for it inside. End up taking out Team Liquid in the fight for this building and being able to sit here safely as Fornia, they're getting sent on and eating zone damage at the same time. Running through the Thermite is just too much for them. And TSM end up picking up those kills, turning this 2v3 on its head. MNK reps in this particular game. Going to be looking down onto the low ground in a really unique position here. Once given TSM some artificial security, they try and ca cancel, punish, whatever they can to this res. For the moment, it'll be a nice bit of damage and actually the elimination on Big Dubbers on their way out. TSM have the opportunity to get their third back in as well. This is crazy that they're able to pull this <laughs> off. Dark Zero know that decisiveness really matters. Luminosity showed it to him. And now HB are getting the chance to do so once again, pushing up onto this high ground. They're the ones with angles on this fight. They're the ones with just that little bit more wiggle room. Rolling Thunder does change that, but Dark Zero don't prioritize the high ground. They instead prioritize the low, want to eliminate TSM, secure themselves. That second place finish. Reps is down and Dark Zero take themselves a brief reset on the outside with the shield bat in hand. HB still are looking for angles on this. Dark Zero cannot fall below the minimum threshold of health that would allow them to push up. Good damage laid in onto the top. Sharky destroys with this skull piercer, but he gets destroyed right back as Blur and, Mes and Messiah combo to take out two of the members of Dark Zero, making it just one left against the member of TSM, firing from the far ground. Dark Zero go out, TSM get second, and now it's HB on the cleanup that have to make it happen. How have they lost one? How is this happening? Happening already. Thirst has come through onto Reps. HB still have those two members, but Furholz is trying to clutch it up from this high ground with the G7 Scout. He's laying in damage from above. Gets not the shield swap just yet, but a nice bit of damage in before HB finally finished the job that was looking a little too risky. So close there. I gotta say that was as tight as it gets there, but HB, a congratulations. The first game of Stormpoint and a handed god spot for quite some time there. Dark Zero's 17 point gap between they and Luminosity, our winners of game one, has started to make everyone else in the lobby sweat a little. So oh. is a good bit of work. Cloud Nine, it, it's all gonna come down to this drop. Watch how Dark Zero have to commit to the low ground. They found Vayne, I do believe. Still looking after the rest of the Dark Zero drop. Oh my god, what oh. a fry. That might do it in. I don't know how much time Dark Zero have, but that kind of fly right there is super punishing. Vayne going down early means that he won't throw a wrench into the plan here. Cloud9, they've got space, but they're giving up some height. They got that addition. They got that additional kill though. And yes, they've relegated themselves to the low ground, but they, through these smokes, have the initial frags climbing up onto the height. They have the chance to eliminate Jen Burton, who trades it out with Zach Mazer. Zero's doing work, but Naughty's headshots are crazy. He's been taken down, and it's a 1v1 to give Dark Zero the win in the end. The drop was so risky, Zephyr, but Dark Zero find themselves their second win of the day. I, I, it is unbelievable the fact that Dark Zero come out on top of that, especially after such a beam there from Cloud9, on top of the fact that they saw such an early drop and precedent levels of damage as well. Dark Zero is just, well, too damn good. <laughs> Just this one exit for DSY. I, I think we're getting a lot of clarity when it comes down to those Horizon Ultimates because those will be the difference. We already saw this interaction before, but being able to suck people through the wall and make sure that they cannot escape things like the Arc Stars is big. What a play from DSY though, as they actually make the decision going oh. outside, risking their lives, taking that little bit of damage to not have to fight big dubbers. Foria recognized that this was an option. Panders is already laying down the damage, but the Rolling Thunders come in. And as we talked about, this is what Foria is vulnerable to. They have to take a reset, have to step back. As Shuby goes down, Foria do manage to heal up. And now big dubbers have to be considering their move, knowing that Foria are currently in control of the game. Can DSY end up moving up to the top? 
Can they actually get any any verticality? Oh. Huge crack as Shumi's gone down to Watson. And Fortian now know that there's only one squad they need to focus on. Yes, three teams are alive, but it's big dubbers that have to be the focus now. And they're still in the low ground. They're still trapped in that door. Let's see how many nades they've got. The Bloodhound old not pop to just yet. We've still got a few seconds until those scans become absolutely necessary. Fortia can even sit right on top of them. Watch those gravity lifts. I was that say, it should be an easy win here for Furia if it all goes according to plan. You just don't need to out-angle yourself. You don't want to put yourself in a position where DSY, the single soul members, can potentially provide just too much damage. Big Tupper's extending stuff. They peek out that window. You can see them hanging from above like gargoyles, just waiting to sniff out their prey. One well-placed gravity lets you put the edge to this as well. Furia have so much time to lay damage down below them that they have not a care in the world. What a fly wow. from Panders! As now comes the Bloodhound out, now comes the hunt! Panders drops down to the low ground, finishing off the squad, and Furia, just like that, navigate the endgame to perfection. It, it was as good as we imagined there. We talked about the height from the very beginning as early as say a team like C9 and Furia take advantage and play it out most perfectly in the end, picking up a much deserved win. Yeah, but this should push them significantly closer if not top and docks dark zero. And it actually takes them all the way up to second place. A reminder of the prizing, 2,500 for first, but 1,500 for second place is no small potatoes, and Furia are currently standing to take that. Luminosity right below them, and Cloud9 and TSM tied for fourth. One of the big questions for me is going to be whether Thirsty Rangers can actually fight off squads that push up on them. Because Sentinels, for example, they've been fighting the whole time. They've got red Evos now. They've got a lot of loot from other squads that they've been able to take out. And oh my god, they might not have tech. TSM really lays in the damage on them from the north. But the question has to be, if Thirsty Rangers get pushed, how much damage can they actually sustain? Indeed. All the yeah, zone will actually be, be pulling to the... Uh... Outside of that oh, building, yeah. towards the, uh, the west side, yeah, towards uh, oh. G2 even. G2, G2 have uh, have a bit of a god spot to work with depending on how they set for this zone. And given the fact that you've got everyone kind of up towards the northeast here, we're going to see a, a smattering of fighting take place as TSM and Sentinels notably may provide shots towards each other, or obviously, once we see the push here. No, nobody's yeah, nobody's even looking at G2 because Sentinels are the one squad that have to move. Tech already low. It's gonna have to hide out underneath this building. Thirsty Rangers not actually capitalizing on this just yet, but with already a knock coming through onto Crust, now things have really opened up. Do TSM try and push up and third party this, risking the fight from G2? We'll see how they play things out as right now, at the very least, TSM have good height, have great cover, and an RE45 as well, Zephyr. Sentinel suffering crust, Senox down, one standing last remaining member here to potentially survive. I like the amount of space that TSM are covering. They have to pay a little bit of respect, though. You have to wonder where exactly are G2? Where are their sight lines? How have they set themselves up? Meanwhile, uh, Tech apparently getting knocks in response here. Oh my god, this is actually like, you third party that every day, but Sentinels now getting eliminated may actually have bought a little more time. Nice finish from TSM as they're going to be able to come in and at least clean that up. Maybe the push from G2 though is down on the low ground. There's another squad. Is it Thirsty Rangers who've given up the building? No, it's G2 who came up to third party this as well. Great scan from Design. Finds the laser beam underneath this building. Taken out Imperial Hal. Putting G2 in the driver's seat. They lose one though, as around the side, Verholst comes to avenge him. Chaotic on top of the building, gonna drop down now, try and get involved in this fight once again, as Verholst continues to play Survivor, lay in damage from afar. Thirsty Rangers may be able to find this result, and now the last one standing, as that RE45 is doing work, Shield. The insane RE45, insane drop weapon right now for season 15. A huge amount of damage output that can go on and result with the beams, but TSM gonna be winning the fight against G2. However, Val's last member alive, the last player alive for TSM gonna be fighting the oh. Team Thirsty Rangers, and Thirsty Rangers are your champions for game six. Oh what a goodness. finish oh, to what? the ship series. <laughs> I could not have wished for a 
better end game than that crazy fight going around and Verholst entering the door, walking into the Watson trap and going, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I'll tell you what, and that was a good end game call. <laughs> Props to shit yeah. there. Yeah, you can you can take you can take my job anytime. Oh, I don't know about that one. That's on you. <laughs> You're the bow. You're the caster. The legendary caster. Giga Chad caster out there. <laughs> yeah, that that was a really fun end game to watch. And as Zephyr said, I mean, great call at the end, and a great win for Thirsty Rangers to finally find themselves that W after a day that, I'll be honest, hasn't favored them so much so far. But we saw a lot happen in that game with Dark Zero actually being the ones in the lead all the way up until then. Zephyr, just a guess. Did anyone overcome them? No. All right. Well, that's the guess. That's the <laughs> <laughs> that is that that's it. Well, we've Congrats. we do have the we do have the standings to bring up. So, though we know that Dark Zero <laughs> likely found themselves in first place, second and third were still up for grads. We had a lot of teams that were really close. G2 and TSM actually among them show. Let's take a yeah. look at who ended up getting that second place. Here we go. Oh! oh <laughs> Zephyr? Dark Zero, yes, they're your champions. Furia retains second place. And at the end of it all, DSM come through, pick up third, steal it away from Luminosity to finalize your top three. I did not see that coming. I, I definitely <laughs> thought TSM were going to alley-oop that. They played real well. They got second place, but it wasn't quite enough. Dark Zero, though, really showing us a mastery of the zones, especially impressing me with their storm point. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys coming out <laughs> to support the Shift Series here in North America. And we're more than excited to see you guys come out once again for EMEA to support the man himself. <laughs> All right, Shiv, you got any trash talk for us tomorrow? Oh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll that's <laughs> right. Who sucks? Who sucks worse than you, Shiv? All right. Let yeah, us know. Let him know. <laughs> Call him out right now. Yeah. Well, the mic I, I, is I, yours. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll leave it to the game. We'll leave it to the game tomorrow. <laughs> I respect that. I, I look. I look forward to to hearing your laughter once again. <laughs> around World's Edge Stormpoint and Broken Moon tomorrow as once again 6 p.m. GMT you guys we've got the EU Shiv series still coming at you thank you all so much for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>